Good news, everyone. You're much better today. Also, guess what? Time for us to enter the Anti Tower. I'm not where I was before because I was doing all those things. The one thing about Final Fantasy XIV is a lot of the things you just need to unlock. Well, like in WoW, because you know that's what I know. Uh, a little less than unlock. There's a few things you, you need to, to, to unlock, but it's not as arduous of a task as <laughs> Final Fantasy XIV. Um, also, one thing I did kind of notice that I think, I think is a slight detriment to Final Fantasy XIV is dungeons. Uh, primarily Maybe it's just just within recent expansions and, and wow. But primarily when you get into an expansion, you get to a point where you can start entering dungeons, but then you get a group of dungeons, uh, of leveling dungeons. So there's like four of them. Uh, in Shadowlands, we've got uh, a product wake. House of Plagues, uh, Halls of Atonement, and Turn of Scythe. But the, these dungeons you can queue for at any time. Um, it, there is also like quests that, that connect to, to them as well but there's these these four different dungeons which as soon as you can start doing the new expansion which i think is pretty much right away you can queue for them you can and there's even a roulette as they would call it here so we just listen out random dungeon fighter in the dungeon fighter finder and while there is a bonus to do them each day or uh, do it the first time you do it the, each day, it's it doesn't it doesn't really change anything. So, like, if you want to do dungeons, you have a variety of dungeons that you can go through. Well, in here, each dungeon has a minimum level, and are pretty much only relevant until the next dungeon opens up. So, looking at the Heavensward dungeons here, you're level fifty-one. From 51 to 53, only you can only queue for for Dusk Vigil. I mean, you can queue for anything that's lower, but it's not going to be as effective as doing Dusk Vigil. Then you unlock some all at 50 through 53, 53 to 55. All you're doing is some all. It is very repetitive. It is boring. In the case of WoW, though, because when you get, like, the thing that the, this way, what if maybe you have to unlock the dungeons, but what if the dungeons scale? What if you could go in between, maybe there's a, 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 a level range, so, like, that's Vigil you'll have access to 51 through 60. Some all y'all have access between 53 to 60, 55 to 60, 57, etc. Or what if you could, act, you could, let's say you've gone through the story, you're leveling a second job. Instead of having to spam Dusk Vigil between 51 and 53 on that alt job, since you've unlocked them all, starting at 51, 
you could use a uh, roulette and you could cue uh, you could you there would be like a random heavensward vengeance roulette and it would give you a random one of the living dungeons. Even if they don't include uh, the Great Google Library. Plus 59, it's pretty much it. It's pretty much end game, it's just your final dungeon. Sort of thing. But you could randomly get Dust Vigil Sawball Fairy Vault. And no matter what level you are in that level range, 51 to 59, let's say, or even 60, you pop in, and it's essentially scaled to your level for you which i think is a great technology that that wow has compared to uh, final fantasy 14. final fantasy 14 everything has a level and they're stuck at that level period you can sink down to that level to provide the necessary difficulty it also means you lose abilities and such but what if instead of that you sink that level to to the mob to you, which in yeah, I think it was in Legion is when the zones became can you can you get your choice of zones. You can go here, 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 and no matter which order that you do these these four zones in, you have to do all four zones, at least the main story in all four zones, and no matter where you are in there. Everything is scaled to your level. And if you're playing with somebody with the max level for whatever that expansion is, so you can still out level things if you go beyond that that level cap. If you go in with somebody who's lower level than you, you'll see a mob, let's say they're a level 50, 51 person. They're fighting a mob. To them, it shows that they're a level 51 mob. You are level 55. Five. You go to attack that same mob, but to you, it's a level 55 mob. So what damage you would do to a level 55 version of that, that mob would be the percentage effect to, to its health as it would be for the person who is at 51. So you both could be, while you're at different levels, you're effectively dealing the same equivalency of damage, percentage-wise. The numbers that you hit them with uh, may look different. You probably will broadcast to the other person, obviously. But you'll see that the mob will still take the same amount of time as if you were both at the same level. So that world scaling to you versus us having to, in some cases, sink to their levels is, I think, it is an advantage it can allow people to group together. In the case of the dungeons, if these, it's, it's, as long as you unlock the dungeons, if they could put these into basically a random queue, it would add variety to people who are leveling themselves jobs. So if I I was uh, over on my Arcanist and I wanted to, to do some dungeons, right now my Arcanist is level 6, so I can't do dungeons. But, but once he gets up to dungeons, that duty roulette we could use it, sure, we get the, the, the leveling roulette, for example. The leveling roulette, one thing is there is a, a option in here for um, limited leveling roulette. So instead of being like dungeons within this, within uh, eight levels, I think it was yeah, within eight levels of the lowest party member. What if it was just dungeons in that expansion? When you use, or even they could ch could slightly change this. 
they've got level 50, 60, 70 dungeons, which are basically the ending game dungeons. But what if it was random, uh, normal dungeons for a specific expansion? I'm just discussing level sync differences between Final Fantasy XIV and, and WoW. like about this dungeon is that you have to be if you eat trash pack before you move on which is my preferred method of doing the dungeon of like pulling all the ball and just daily have it. I feel, and may or may not be, but I feel doing each trash pack one at a time is actually faster.
Um, I think I like WoWs better with the fact that you can do a variety of dungeons between levels instead of like having to span a single time. Um, I do like in Final Fantasy XIV where dungeons are actually effective at leveling. However, the um, because in WoW you choose your class and that's your class. There, there. If, if you want to, if you want to free stand paladin. That's two separate characters, not a single character. But that means that you can level them. You, you basically just level them. You don't level each on the same character, you're not leveling them on the same thing. Uh, what I would like to see to kind of like uh, supplement that is there is a feature in Final Fantasy XIV called the Plus, where you, you could essentially replay. Um, what I would like to see is them allowing the use of New Game Plus as experience. So you could play Main Story Plus over and over again. Plus. Because the MSQ is the biggest source of MSQ. And it would be an optional feature. It's not like you don't have to do that. Um, I would would have preferred to see that the side quests were actually more effective on, on being a supplemental thing, so people could level all jobs effectively with side quests. So it would probably get more people into doing the side quests. World scaling in Final Fantasy XIV, I don't think it's necessary. Mainly because it is very much a linear path for, for the story. So there's a few where it's like there's a few separate uh, uh, quest lines that may be completed or complete the next part. But The, but those are just like complete these two quests as they continue in the story. Uh, I, I think that I think there may be a detriment to some things where um, I think there is a difference to the fact that people uh, of scaling, not having the world scale to the character, but the character scale to the world. And in the end, there, it's two different styles. Like, people would see uh, I do find, find when it, when the by finding that the um, most effective way to level is by doing dungeons, that could get tedious and more. And there's like additional things you can do while you're doing while you're leveling, but it doesn't feel as good as leveling the I think there needs to be parity between standing dungeons and doing side quests. Uh, system. Um, I would prefer if the fates level to you was like even a max level. So even doing old world fates would end up just being super easy. So what? Um, being that fates, I would like to see fates work more like world quests. In, in WoW. 
Um, I would also like to see, be able to see those fates on the map, even if I'm not using If it seems like I'm yelling, it's because I think I have my volume. I think the spell effects are very pretty. I think sometimes you get in the way. I can barely see what's happening. Here. Oh, I can't see it because gravity is going off in the spell effect. They have settings for that, but I would like to see it to see the spell effect. But I would also like to uh, effectively see it. We shouldn't be, we, we shouldn't be like, like, oh, we need to, you could use this button here to, uh, oh, <laughs> you, you could turn off other people's spell effects. It's like, okay, uh, yeah, um, they're doing something, but I can't see the AoE circle that I need to see in order to be inside it, so I'm healed. <laughs> it's, it's, I, I think they're just being too ostentatious when it comes to um, spell effects. Uh, it, it's, it's pretentious spell effects. My favorite uh, final fantasy content creator is uh, He has an entire video about, like, people who use limit break.
Very creepy. But the, the one thing I, I, I do want to know for, for people is I, I do want everybody to understand this is a, a critique, a criticism, but it's not saying it's bad. It's just my take on things. I mean, it is Final Fantasy, so things are big, ostentatious, it's Japanese and anime inspired sort of thing. Through time and space hast thou journeyed unto me, as I knew thou wouldst. We are the word of the mother. We, who were once called Minfilia. Much time hath passed for thee since the bloody banquet, since, since I hearkened to her word. Mother, Hydelin, guided me towards Yishtola and Thancred, that I might be swept up in their flow and delivered unto the ethereal sea. There, adrift and alone, her voice silent once more. I prayed for those we had lost, for those we can yet save. To her, I would make an offering. We speak now with one voice, one will, one word. Unto thee we bequeath the most precious of gifts, the truth which lieth at the heart of this world. Thus do we beseech thee once more. Hear, feel, think. Before there was life in the depths of the ethereal sea, light and dark did once dwell as one. But the darkness coveted power, and the balance was broken. Thus was I forced to banish him unto the distant heavens, to forever remain apart, a moon bound. In sundering the star did we cry out, and the barriers twixt plains chanced to falter. Across ten and three were we then divided. Reflections of the source, each possessed of a shard. Zodiac longeth to be made whole. For his restoration, for his resurrection, his servants labor without cease. They seek to tear down the barriers which surround the source. Thus do they rejoice in their ardor, in your calamities, for each marks 
are rejoining. Seven times have they succeeded. Seven times hath the darkness grown stronger. Seven times have I failed. <coughs> the Asians cannot be suffered to continue. This, this is my final. Is all but spent. With what remains, I will return you to the shore of the ethereal sea. Blessed children, go forth and see. Thank the Twelve! Did you find her? Did you find Minfilia? The word of the Mother? I'm not sure I understand. Nor am I. Cryo? As unbelievable as it sounds, I see no reason to doubt her... The word's tale. No one was more sensitive to the will of Hydaelyn than Minfilia, and... If Hydaelyn has grown so weak that she can barely make herself heard, it is not hard to see why Minfilia, having joined with her, might struggle to maintain her own form. What? Why would she need to maintain her own form? Are you saying... Are you saying she's gone? But that cannot be! Not now. Not after all we have accomplished. We were meant to wash her in the dawn's light together. She threw herself on the fire to fuel your dawn's light, boy. You'll just have to usher it in on your own. Must you be so ungentle? Tell me about the Scions, boy. The... the... the Scions of the Seventh Dawn lay before Aeolzea's salvation. Whenever the realm is threatened, be it by Primal, Asian, Garlean, or any other, we take up arms in her defense, that all in Aeolzea may live to see a brighter tomorrow. And that's very noble of you. But in chasing after these lofty goals of yours, you seem to have lost sight of some basic truths. To win a war, you must be willing to do whatever it takes. To fight, to kill, and if necessary, to die. The path you've chosen is paved with the dead. Walk it with your eyes open, or not at all. I know the truth of which you speak, and have from the first, 
If the Asians will go to any length to resurrect their god, then we must needs be as committed to our cause, to unmask them and their schemes, and to crush them both utterly. Come, there is much to be done. Yes, of course. Tancred, wait! No. No, this is all wrong. The idealism of a 16-year-old boy. She's, she's not coming back, is she? I know that, I do. I believe all of her beliefs were ever, was ever her way. So will we, as we must? What greater calling could there be, have been to stand against the dark as defenders of light? And yet, where does it end? The sacrifice, the loss. Get a Pororongo. Must ask that you not breathe a word of this to any of the others at the Rising Zones, especially Flamo. I will brief Tataru of what we have learned as well as Orionji. He may have some insight onto what the word told us. As for you, Eskers, after all you've done, I would say you have earned a rest. Ah, but speaking of well-earned rewards, I received a message from Sir Emric while you were away. It would seem he was planning a ceremony of some sort and would like you to attend. He did not divulge the details, preferring instead to explain in person. Mayhap it, you should pay him a visit. Alright, we're going to uh, teleport to Foundation. Um, the Holy Sea of Ishgard. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to take a quick break. I didn't use the
Pleasure to see you again, my friend. I take it you received our invitation. Good, good. You of all people should be present. When the true brothers of the faith seized control of the vault, I feared the worst. Yet in adversity were we blessed with the promise of peace between man and dragon through Vidofnir's timely rescue of an innocent child. Timely, I say, though miraculous or providential might better describe the event. The gods themselves could not have devised a more fitting symbol of hope. Needless to say, we could scarce let such an opportunity pass us by. Which is why I set about making formal arrangements for a peace conference between our peoples. You and yours have done more to bring us together than any, and it is only right that you attend. But I confess that is not the only reason I would be glad to have you there. Given Nidhogg's implacable opposition to the peace, it is possible that he and his followers may attempt to disrupt proceedings, in which event your presence would be a comfort to all in attendance. Pray understand, I have no wish to invite the worm's ire. But if our fractured nation is to heal, if we are to move forward as a people united, then we must do whatever is necessary to bring about lasting change. It is nothing. It is nothing. Lucia cautioned me against giving vent to my passions, lest my wounds reopen. It has not been easy reaching out to our opponents in Ishgard, many of whom sympathized with the actions of the true brothers. But in so doing, we have limited the influence of the Zealots. The people are ready, my friend. This conference must go ahead. I knew you would understand. The conference will take place on the border of Ishgardian and Dravanian territory in Falcon's Nest. Lucia is there seeing to the final preparations even as we speak. Pray join her at your earliest convenience. It would not do for the guest. Oh, and uh, one more thing. A drink. We should make time for one. Once the conference is concluded, I mean. By my reckoning, it is long overdue. in Falcon's Nest. Well, I mean, it's just a drink. I mean, of course, it's going to be like wine, but still. Also, for some reason, my overlay is, so i got to keep looking to, to my side to see the uh, chat.
but I like interacting with people. It's actually one of the reasons why I started streaming. We build a community. I'm not very good at it, but still. Me be, being a, a, a socially awkward person. Well, Commander said you would come messing us. As you can see, preparations for the conference in subject proceeding apace. Mark well, the curtain above. A conceals a relief that has been will be unveiled during the conference. The Masons labor day and night to see it finished on its schedule. Sir Emmerich wanted a symbol of which would endure long after this conference is concluded. I think you would be pleased with the results. It was not my will. But I made it mine, and to see it draw closer to a resolution fills me with strange hope. His faith is infectious, is it not? His certainty that we can be better than we are. Forgive me, I'm rambling. We must be tired from your journey. Go rest. I will not keep you. We would rather not take a rest than why not take a walk around Falcon's Nest? Make your presence known to the people and so forth. In addition to those who have come from afar and attend the ceremony, you will find meet Lords Otero and Emmeline, Lane, who have graciously volunteered their services. They should be glad glad to see you. Now if you excuse me, I must need to turn to my people. Everything set to begin. I wasn't sure how many might might come, so I thought it best to come early and find a spot to greet you. When I heard that Sir Emmerich was planning to make a speech, I knew I couldn't miss it. I mean, the man risked his own neck to rescue those hostages. How often do we, do we get heroes like that in this day and age? And he's more than a fighter too. He's a thinker. He is. He's got a plan to better our lives, to change things, and he'll do it by the fury. Me and my family, friends and family, we all believe he can do. Bloody exciting, is it? Not just peace for the dragons, but with all of them heretics besides. Don't misunderstand me, we all got a healthy fear of being bathed in dragon fire. That being said, the heretics did would far more to hinder our efforts here in the past, so hearing that we were close to a reconciliation comes as a great relief. I have never watched the game. I think I I, I, I I recognize the name. It was a movie. I can't remember what uh, what it was about too much. But I never did did see the the, the gamers. I don't think I it was either wasn't really interested or. It was, it was between, it, it was the one that was the thousand dollar budget. It was like a 2002 film where it was like, they, they bounced between uh, them playing the game and their characters in the game. Then they had had a sequel, The Gamer's Darkness Rising, and The Gamer's Hands of Fate. 
this at least reminds me what it, what it was about. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I, I think it was more I, because I think this kind of was more of a comedy. I think. It's probably one of the reasons why I didn't watch it because I'm not a fan of modern comedies. And I think that started in somewhere in the 90s. For me, at least. Comedies... A lot of modern comedies deal with what I refer to as embarrassing moments. I can put that in quotes. Um, well, I kind of prefer the older type of comedy where it's witty, punny, uh, sometimes slapsticky, like like The Princess Bride, uh, uh, Airplane. Uh, um, a lot of the uh, Mel Brooks movies. I mean, I didn't like all of the Mel Brooks movies, but, you know, to each their own sort, sort of thing. But there, there are plenty of Mel Brooks movies I, I love. Like, Robin Hood Men in Tights is one of my favorite comedies of all time. And it's just... where funny moments will happen or slapstick moments will happen... Or just these ridiculous things happen. And it's just that type of funny. Um, I really did like the original The Mask. I remember like that. I haven't watched that in forever. But it's a lot where... I don't know, like it, like I never really did like friends <laughs> but when you go go back to like cheers and mash those those to me were good comedies. like modern comedies these days just don't do it for me carol burnett the carol burnett show hilarious one of my favorite parts of the carol burnett show <laughs> is when the other actors Start cracking up. <laughs> uh, there's, there's this, there's a scene. I'm sure you can find a YouTube clip of it. Of oh god, <laughs> they're doing the Mama's Family bit, <laughs> and. <laughs> One of them, for some reason, started talking about an elephant and, like, its trunk getting snuffed up or something. And then he makes the noise. And just the rest of the crew just just cracks up. Oh, whose line is it anyway? Is actually... Originally from the UK. 
Um, and then uh, after they stopped airing that, I'm I'm not gonna say, I don't want to say canceled. I don't know what happened, but originally originally from the UK, completely different host than Drew Carey show and Ryan Styles and was on it and eventually Drew Carey's like, hey, why don't we bring back Whose Line Is It Anyway? Because Whose Line Is It Anyway is a great show. <laughs> and they did. And I think they did a pretty good job. I mean, it was a little bit more Americanized, uh, but still, they brought it back. And uh, Wayne Brady, Ryan Stiles, and oh my God, I can't remember the other guy. Um, who were commonly the ones that were, were on the American one, were also frequently on the UK version. And I believe they brought it back again. I don't know. In any case, whose line is any, anyway rocks? Like, like you wouldn't believe. I love that. love that. When it comes to comedy, that's that sort of thing, thing I like. Anyways, moving on. What were we saying? Uh, the heretics did find the inner efforts here in the past, so hearing that we were, were close to a reconciliation comes as a great relief. Alright. Here I am, flying around on a dragon. Much la less a, a younger looking incarnation of the father of all dragons. to see that the rumors are true. Well met, Master Winsbawn. I fear not. I have no intentions of begging your aid for this or that. Everything appears to be in order. He says just as soon as Hey, I got a thing. <laughs> I'm also an adventurer. One thing about, about the warrior of light here or here, here is you're an adventurer. Just because you do these, these dramatic heroic wrote deeds such as defeating Nidhogg. <laughs> the the defeating the the primal summoning Thord in the seventh uh, uh, quest for power uh, defeating Asians these big big things somebody says they'll give me some money for uh, delivering something oh sure I'll, I'll go ahead and take that you know why because I'm a venture Oh, you're having having some problems at your at your farm, and you need somebody to to help uh, uh, clean up these 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 pests. Sure, I'll do that. I'm an adventurer. Sometimes, the th things about adventurers, adventurers, they'll do things big and small. <laughs> it's just this is part of being an adventurer. Sometimes, sometimes you don't want to 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 be the one to go after the Ultima weapon. Jeez, that's a pretty big thing. <laughs> can I can I just go uh, uh, stop these ruffians <laughs> that are harassing this small town, uh, this small hamlet? <laughs> you know, it, it's just one of those things. Oh, <laughs> so, oh, hi. Hey, can you check in with these people, by the way? We can't send anybody out. <laughs> Just we'll give you some cash. Uh, <laughs> uh, I need I need you to go see if you can find some wine for a feast we're having. You know, <laughs> it's it's got to be special. <laughs> yeah, exa exactly. Sometimes you go. Go kick Rumu's ass. To to be fair, it was him just testing our worth. He was he was willing to be defeated if we were able to defeat him, and if he does, he will judge us worthy, and that everything should be okay. You need not worry about his people. Because they understand that, that you are there, you're strong, you have good intentions. But sometimes a girl needs some help catching some butterflies, so. 
Well, to be fair, this wasn't the original Rabu anyways. It was just a, uh, a, a an etheric construct created by the sylphs who summoned him. So, and, and when we first meet the sylphs in the sylph management series, the tempered ones, they just stick to their homeland. They're not going to try to conquer anybody else or anything. They just, you know, you don't bug them, they won't bug you. Everything's hunky dory. You stay over there, we'll stay over here, and everything will be okay. Hmm. It's just when you get to things like Garuda and Titan and Leviathan and, and, and Ifrit, that's when you get things that are a little more. Summon the god to smite our foes. Ramu, summon our god to protect us. <laughs> you don't need to do any smiting if they're not needed. Just, 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 just if somebody comes in, could you take care of them? Thank you. That's the difference. But he was defeated, so he's so he's not uh, leeching etheric energy from the land. It doesn't need to be something. Anyways. Only Leonian considers one of the victors might, might not have been informed of our plans. As I recall, the Dolphinier may pass directly over their encampment. The last thing we need is a glory-seeking nobleman attempting to slay a Dravadian ambassador to a peace conference. Yeah, that would probably be a bad idea. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, Arturel. soon to be Count Fortal. How much has changed since we fought alongside each other in the vault? If you had told me that we would soon be hosting a peace conference, I would have thought you a naive fool. Yet here we are, preparing to make that fantasy a reality. Ha! And here I am, laboring to make it so. If I may... Certainly, First Commander. How may I be of service? One of the convictors is refusing to stand down. The majority is willing to do so, but a small party is... Yeah. The Marie have instead pledged to engage any Dravanian bound for... Well, for consist. If you already take me, they would defy Sir Emmerich's commands? They dare attack the Dolphin. Mm. It will not come to that. But to see that it does not, we must needs hasten to their encampment. They should be far more reluctant to, to oppose those of a lord of House for Tom present. I understand completely. Let us depart at once. But ere we do, I must ask, would you look after Aunt Lane while I am away? As you know, he has ever been an impulsive, changeable ch uh, child. But recently he seems to be suffering from a bout of melancholy. I thought to lift his spirits by having him assist with guard to you. A simple but honorable charge. Unlikely to expose him to the danger given the presence of so many other knights. Alas, he has taken no entrance, and I fear he may abandon his post in my absence. All I ask is that you keep an eye on him until I return. We was also being there that, baby. Thank you, my friend. I promise we will not be long. The busy at the moment. Oh boy, guarding this tavern, as it were. Oh, I see. Arturel thought I might be a derelict, be derelict in my duties, eh? The nerve of my brother to question my dedication. And since you're here, maybe I have I can put you to proper use. The wasteland beyond the walls must be kept safe for travelers. Yet I have been forbidden from leaving Falcon's Nest. I wouldn't do for an esteemed guest to be devoured by wolves. Oh no. 
Oh no. Yet that is precisely what will happen if we do not call the Roman packs. Your map, if I may. Right there. Those are the points of your scouts. Our scouts mark for the patrols. I'll leave it to you, old boy. Good on route. I must return to my route. Oh dear. Uh, do be careful, my lord. <laughs> I did my father right. So he's there. Speaking of which, I might see party for it. Speed. Let's go with small bull Spain. It pleases me to inform you that I have completed my rounds and that all is well in Falcon's Nest. Oh, and there was a grizzled fellow looking for you. You know, the one who made, made that arses confess. Cover that. Tancred, was it? He was asking after you. Anyway, once I noticed the garish weapons he was about here, I deemed it to be be a waste to leave him be. I dispatched him to an area I neglected to mark on the map. Yes, this one. If you hurry, you might still be there. Fancy meeting you here, Askos. It was fortunate I came when I did. These two would not have fared well. These two would not have fared well against the bulls on their own. The young lord wasted no time taking advantage of you, did he? And me, I suppose. Let us return to Falcon's Nest, then, and see what other thrilling tasks he may have as for us. Definitely not talking. That's how it works. And there you are, pair of gallant heroes I've ever seen. I saw them, comrades in arms, reunited at last. By selfless sacrifice, have you guaranteed the safety of so many guests? 
on behalf of his god, I thank you both. And with that, there is not left to do but to enjoy our well-earned breath. Oh, and this should be, of course, go without saying. And let's let's keep the those last few favors between us. Yes, I'll throw one in the stand. Right then, the first floor of these barracks has been converted into a tavern for the duration of the conference. Why don't you go and have something to eat? Well, once a suggestion of which I agree. Go on ahead, Eskos. I will join you in on. an empty seat and I'll be with you in a moment. Cold out, isn't it? Here, a mug on the house. Let's get some colour back in them cheeks. Especially considering I'm... the clothing I'm wearing in this cold weather. Longer than usual. We've got a lot of hungry folk to feed, what with the conference and all. Oh, so many people with cause to celebrate. To think there could be peace in our time. After all them years of fighting. When I heard about the conference, I knew I had to come. I knew I had to be here. To do my bit. My husband, he... He died fighting the dragons, you see. And here we are, about to break bread with him. Nope, this isn't an echo. <laughs> this is not an echo. You were right, my friend. You looked tired. Reckon you could do with a good long rest? This was never your fight. This is an echo hub. told me he walks in Halone's halls. Him and the rest of his unit. They told me the same. I expect they think it's comforting. Every time I come, I cry. I cannot bear to remember, but to forget would be a thousand times worse. Yet that is what they would have us do. Accept this truth for the sake of peace. Bury the past and look to the future. But he was my future. My flesh and blood. My heart. Is this it? 
Are we the only ones with the courage to oppose this madness? Cowards, a lot of them. They think only of the prize, of the peace Sir Emmerich promises them. They know in their hearts it's a lie, but they go along with it anyway, desperate fools. But not I. I see the worm that killed my brother in my dreams every night, and I will not rest until he lies broken at my feet. Him and every last one of his accursed kin. All this nonsense about kings of Eld, as if I care what they did or didn't do, makes no difference to me and mine. Have the dragons sued for peace in a thousand years? Are they bollocks? It's a bloody ruse is what it is, and Sir Emmerich and the rest of them bloody fallen for it. But what can we do? They believe, and naught we can say will ever change their minds. Whether we like it or not, man and dragon will come together at Falcon's Nest, and all will be forgiven. Forgiven and forgotten. <gasps> no. I will not let that happen. Oh. They will remember the true face of the enemy. I will show it to them. And we will rise up against them once more. Hey, hey! This is no time for napping. Do you have your wits about you? Good. Come with me. We have a crisis on our hands. Brothers and sisters, oh, do not be fooled by the honeyed words of the Dravarnians. The peace they promise is but a prelude to slaughter. Remember your husbands and wives never returned from war. Your children torn apart by fang and claw. All your loved ones show no mercy. Does not your heart cry out for vengeance? Your blood boil at the injustice? Remember the face of your enemy, brothers and sisters! Remember it! And strike back! You there! Don't just stand around gawping! Do something, man! Stop her! Yes, yes, my lord. See? See here the true nature of the High Born. With lies and deception they lead us to our doom. And dare we raise our voices in dissent? Death! This is the choice they have given us, brothers and sisters. Death by Dragon's Fang, or death by Nobleman's Command. Death to all we hold dear! I spit on your choices, Nobleman! You will take no more from me! No more! No more! Uh. What have you done? I, I, I only... 
only did as you ordered, my lord. I gave no such order. I, I did not. I... I never meant for anyone to... It's one of those things where it's like... The order was to stop her. Not kill her. So... It probably would have been best if the knight did like... Well, the knight was probably a little panicked. was like, oh, I don't know what to do, sort of thing. And after getting it just to stop, he could have like... Uh, how would you like me to stop us? <laughs> or... Or... Uh, uh, Somebody, we, we gotta get out there and try to get up to where she is and, and stop her. And just take her away from the situation or something. Uh, the wound her shirt uh, up in the air and how good or bad that is. But still, um, <sighs> anyways. What did I say? It could have not played out any worse, given the first uh, commander and Lord Alterer. I'm not here to take command of the situation. I spoke with the messenger who said they would be returning shortly, but until they do, not will be done. Lord Emmeline has retreated to the barracks and is refusing to speak to anyone. Therefore, it falls on to us to ensure the order has been fully restored. Come, let us walk the street and speak with the pe people. My wife and I fell, I fell while fleeing with the others at first. The Terugians, Terugians tend to our bruises afterwards. Ah, those mad fools have ruined everything. For what? to resort to violence, but when I heard her speak, her words were as a dagger to my heart. Who are we to decide that enough is enough, that their calls of justice can never be answered? Will this be the end to it, or will there be others like them in the true brothers? I do not want to bear steel against my kinsmen ever again. I do not know if I can even, even can. I heard rumors that the young lord was a drunken fool, but imbecile thought it would be a good idea to have him have the run of Falcon's Nest. Well, I, I see him and Sir Emmerich uh, take their bloody change and shove it up their asses. I'll not be taken in b by that lot again. <laughs> What say you? So the violence has passed, but the people are far from recovered. That is to be expected. For the moment, it appears that no innocents were harmed by the guards. The blame of all casualties have been placed upon protesters. Nevertheless, the people will not soon forget the image of a young lordling ordering the public execution of an unarmed pro protester, one whose words resonate with the hearts of many. After all, who among us? have not lost ones. Lord Artoran, the first commander, should have returned by now. To the tavern, then, their first order of business will be to speak with Lord Emmeline, 
and I somehow doubt that he has moved in ill since last we saw him. My apologies, Essigos. I bear full responsibility for this debacle. There will be time for that later. I, for one, am more concerned about picking up the pieces. What do we do now? What do we do? According to initial reports, the protest was orchestrated by the young woman who Lord Emmeline Order shot. She and her conspirators infiltrated Falcon's nest, posing a certain to guests. Several were taken alive. Uh, others resisted were struck down. Still others took their own lives. Our forces suffered casualties as well, but by the grace of the Fury, no civilians were seriously injured. Still more remarkably, the ringleader yet lives, for the time being at least. The Terugians are doing what they can for her, but she may not live through the night. Given the, this impeccable timing, it is like that the convictors who drew away from the hamlet were in league with the protesters. It, accordingly, we have detained them for questioning. I'll be sworn that these villains sent, spent as much effort plotting the failure of the, this peace conference as we did its success. Well, if the moves with the Hamlets are more an indication, there have been, been the more fruitful labors. In the wake of the protests, the, peop the people seem disillusioned. You spoke with them, then? I see. Sir McPlace is trusting me. It is difficult to explain what has happened here. Remember how far we have come, First Commander. The people's faith may be shaken, but we convinced them before, and will do so again. And if we can, can but find a means to remind them, to show them once more the promise that change holds for us, that this tragedy shall, too shall pass into to the past. We must pray that you are right. Nevertheless, for the time being, I have no choice but to suspend the peace conference pending Sir Emmerich's final decision. Under the circumstances, I cannot leave Falcon's Nest. Eskos, will you deliver my report to the Lord Commander and Lord Commander instead? Get up, Emmeline. You're going with him. Go on without me. I was not asking. You will answer for your actions in person. Is that clear? Yes, my lord. Come on, Lord. The man so, so it is not here. In fact, I've not seen him for some time. All right. All right. I could have sworn he was. Oh dear. Done to you, Onowa, Onowa. Is that you, my lord? You, you seem rather flustered. Because of you, you imbecile. What in the seven hells happened to you? My, my apologies. Some few of the guests expressed a wish to leave, and I implored them to stay. It would seem they took issue with my request. Oh, gods forgive me. If I had only been more careful with my words. Do, do not blame yourself, my lord. I know. I know that you and your brother have Ishgard's best interests at heart. That poor woman. She lives in the past, clinging to the memories of the lost. But the future holds so much promise. 
so much joy. And you, you know that better than any. Onua? Calm yourself, the boy will live. But it's imperative we get him inside and into the care of a Kairujin without delay. Kairujin. You need to remember that. Oh, we saying. were so close! Why does it all have to fall to pieces? Don't they want to live in peace? Don't they want to be happy? We all want the same thing! And still, still it falls to pieces! Tell me, what, what was I supposed to do? Hm? Someone, anyone, tell me, what was I supposed to do? Stop looking to others. You make your choice and you live with the consequences. And what would you know about consequences? You who always know just what to say and just what to do. Your every deed is greeted with a round of applause. You know nothing about me. I have fought tooth and nail for the people I hold dear. Done everything in my power to save them and i have failed learn to live with it i have But I like how Think Grid basically. I'm like, why you stuck up, son of a? I just want to smack you. <laughs> and and Think Grid basically stops, pops him to hit him first, then he hits him back. <laughs> basically, let him hit first. <laughs> May have overacted, but it needed to be done. It was really hysterical. I understand the desire to look for reasons, for excuses. Convince yourself you have no choice. But the past is the past, and there is not to be gained from reliving your mistakes. I know this. I know this. But he. I have no desire to wait for the Lordling to emerge from his puddle of self pity. We have important matters to attend, attend to in Ishgard. Where did the demonstration's resolution outs outstrip you, as ghosts? Every man, woman, and child of Ishgard is a tale. Tis rumored that my youngest lack of judgment was to blame, of course. 
Such stories are prone to exaggeration. What exactly came to pass? I see. So that is the truth of it. Regardless of his intent, the result was undeniable. He has furthered the cause of this misguided few who cannot let go of the past. In an instant, the dedicated peace we are poised to forge is once more beyond us. I dwell too deeply on the war and the vengeance it begets, only for that to be taken away. Is it any wonder that we are left bereft? For what was this sacrifice? Have we not to show for our suffering? I thought peace a sufficient salve, but mayhap I was mistaken. We are warriors, Lord Advent, and ours is a nation built on the centuries of warfare. Right or the wrong, this is who we are, and we deny it, and we deny it at our peril. To hold on to the past without being beholden to it. I, we must needs find a way to honor the sacrifice of our forefathers without glorying in their excesses. A difficult fact, to be sure. We dare not to deny the scars which, which mar our nation's soul, lest we spur uh, other delusions, delusion souls to retrace them. But, as you say, we dare not revel in gl past glories either, but they are tainted at all. A clear, unambiguous enemy and an undeniable righteous cause. It is a bit bitter reflection, but lies through. Though they were, they did long serve to unite us. No truth will ever serve as, ser serve as well, I fear. Yet, we are not without options. At our last meeting, a proposal was tabled by the other members of the AOC and Alliance for joint military exercises to strengthen the ties between our nations and test our readiness to meet with the common threat. I had thought to delay these exercises until after the peace conference, but mayhap a grain melee. They would be all the all the thing to lift our beleaguered spirits. Better still, an occasion for the Temple Knights and the Watch to take the field as allies, a united Ishgardian force filled with men and women from all walks of life, which would stand against a coalition of the Allied Nations' fights. Hosted by Ishgard in the shadow of the Gates of Judgment, the victory under such circumstances would serve as reaffirmation, nay, a declaration of all, all and sundry that we are as strong as the United States. Such a victory would do much to fan the fames of patriotism, it is true. But if we should be defeated, though even to hold our own against the creams of three nations might be enough for a triumph. Very well, you may count on my support, and for what little it is worth. However, I have a request. I would have my son Emily take part in the Grand Melee. For his deeds, as he brought shame upon Ishgard, and so by his deeds I would have him bring our nation on. As you wish, my lord, if that is his desire, then it shall be. He said. Now then, we have no time to lose. Eskers, you be so kind to deliver my instructions to Lucy. I shall write to the Alliance leaders at once and begin making arrangements for the Grand Maid. Should you send a chance to see my son, pray and form him with the duty. If he would, has not yet already returned, he will soon enough, making every effort to avoid. So, that is their solution, a grand melee to unite the people. And what part would they have you play in this affair, I wonder? You whom have taken into their confidence, and upon whom they have come so heavily to rely. And will you oblige them when the proportions is, is, proposition is made? Will you stand for Ishgard once more? Let's see, choices. We have come this far, have we not? Uh, I will stand with my friends and comrades, not a nation. 
It's a good being in much, isn't it? <laughs> I'm going to say we have come this far and we don't. Well, we can put it like that. I suppose it would be a shame to see it through to the bitter end. So, for this grand melee of his, Sir Emmerich wishes to feel the force comprising both his Temple Knights and Hilda's watch, yes? I can only imagine what she will have to say about that. In fact, curiosity compels me to go and see for myself. Well, as it goes, have you spoken with Sir Emmerich? Yeah, we decided on a grand melee. I was aware of the Alliance's request. So, so Emmerich would turn these exercises into a spectacle for the masses. It is not that I doubt the efficacy of such a plan. Indeed, I know its effectiveness uh, only too well, having witnessed it firsthand. Nevertheless, he has not once given me reason to doubt his intentions, and these are desperate times indeed. I will select knights for the event forthwith. As for the watch, Thancred has that. <laughs> Did he now? <laughs> How considerate of Master Thancred to seek out our young watch commander of his own volition. Alas, he acted prematurely. Pray deliver this list of watch candidates to Hilda. I would have her best men, not her most dispensable. Thancred's been telling me about what Sir uh, America's Grand Soiree seems we expected to join. It's nice of him to invite us and all, but I hope he knows what he's doing, as we ain't dressed to dance with professional bleeding soldiers. Well, well, seems the first commander's gone and handpicked her guests. Can't say I disagree with their choices, though. She's got a good eye. Will you be fighting too? Reckon I'll be. It would inspire the lads if we, you were. You might take their minds off getting their hides tanned and all. Think about it, eh? Need to ask, but you haven't seen our favorite lordling, have you? <sighs> I th thought not. On the assumption that he is not to be found in his father's loving embrace, I suspect we split up and look for him. I will search foundation, you the pillars. Uh, see the cause is there's somewhere around there. I've seen him here several times. Oh, annoying pet bat. I carried on a while to the manor. My best Kyrugians. Does I, I pronounce that right? Kyrugians. <laughs> and attending him as we speak. He's yet awake, but surely, surely he will. So, father has volunteered me for his grand melee of theirs. My beloved family, always making my decisions for me. No, it's not like that. It's just, oh, you wouldn't understand. How could you? You're free to be the man you want to be, whereas I... I'm a son of House Vuitton. Don't you see? My future is determined before I was born. What I could and could not do. Right or wrong, it was, it was the way 
until the old order began to crumble. Now we wander among the rubble, searching for a purpose, for a place. All around me, brave men and women rise to the occasion. With faith and conviction, they dedicate themselves to their causes, but not I. I'm terrified of making the wrong choices, which is why I'd let better men make them for me. Do this, do that, take this duty, guard this conference. I suppose I have convinced myself, so if I was above it, to tell your friend to show me otherwise. When I saw on the wall, I wanted to scream. I wanted someone to blame. But in the end, that was only me. Only me. So you see, I cannot meekly bow my head and accept Father's command. Such cowardice is what brought me to this point. I will go to Sir Amrick and I will make my own decision. Emmeline, Emmeline! You're, you're, you're going the wrong way. It, it's, a, the, the, the Ace Right shard's over here. It's over here. So, let's go back to where we talked to him. So, I was standing here. He was standing here, right? He was talking to me, and then he said that he was going to go see Sir Rupert. In order to get to an Aetherite Shard, or even go in the actual direction of the Congregation of Most Heavenly, the Congregation of Our Knights Most Heavenly, you need to turn, he would have need to turn left and go this way. Whether you went up the stairs or you actually took the Aetherite, Aetherite Shard, I don't know, I don't care. But instead, he stood here and went this way. The complete opposite direction of where you needed to go. I think that was just an, a, a uh, one of those like minor mistakes in things, or it could be because this is a shopping district, right? We got a lot of stores. We got the jeweler. We got a, a, a sundries vendor, an arms vendor, an armorer, and a weaponsmith over here. Maybe he came here because he was going to purchase something for me. I don't know. We don't actually see that. But it seemed like he was going to go directly to serve. That was the implication. So. Also, due to uh, people making money as in somebody working overtime. Uh, Fires and Dragons is canceled for the evening. We will return next week at about 7.30 central. I see, very well, let me enter. Commander, if I may, I wish to speak with you before the Grand Millet. Proceed. How do you do it, my lord? How do you lead with such certainty when so many of our countrymen will not hear of peace with the Dravanians? Some of them hate you almost as much as the dragons themselves. They decry you as a patricide in the streets. They even tried to kill you, for God's sakes. Yet still, you march on, undaunted, where no archbishop dared to tread. What is your secret? Where do you find the strength? For centuries, our nation has been punished for the sins of our forefathers. If our punishment is to end, I believe we must right the wrongs of antiquity and move forward as a nation united. Needless to say, my father did not share this opinion. He did not believe the people strong enough to bring about their own deliverance, trusting only in himself. Tyranny seemed to him the only solution. But I have faith in the people, Lord Amanalain, 
I have faith that they will weather this storm and overcome every trial we set before them. Many have fought and died to see this blight upon our nation's history cleansed, and I would not let their sacrifices be in vain. Though we invite reprisals, the risk is worth the reward. I want to believe. I do. Lord Commander, through my careless orders, a pall has been cast over these proceedings, and I beg the opportunity to make amends. I, Amanelaine de Forton, do hereby request leave to take part in the Grand Melee. Who am I to deny such a heartfelt plea? We would be honored to have you join the fray, my lord. You will take charge of the Ishgardian forces. For all my other responsibilities, I am still Lord Commander of the Temple Knights, and I would not soon yield this duty to another. The esteemed Sir Emmerich leading the Temple Knights and the Watch into battle along with my youngest. I could wish for no more. Then you wish for too little, my lord. There is another who might yet join the fray. An indispensable ally to whom we owe much and more. An adventurer beholden to none who nevertheless chose to champion our cause, who has shared in our suffering and in our glory. A warrior without equal, who I am privileged to call a friend. There is no one I would rather have fighting by my side. I ask this in full knowledge of your obligations, and will not think less of you should you refuse. But if your conscience will allow it, might you oblige me, my friend, one more time. Together we shall give the people a spectacle for the ages, a celebration to mark the dawning of a new era. Oh, this help me? I think I might be in love. I dare say I must be cheating. It might be cheating, too. Your mere presence is enough to turn the tides of most battles. And did you see the way his eyes lit up when you nodded? It was a look of poundless relief and joy. One would think a politician more practiced at concealing his emotions. Still, his honesty gives him credit. For a moment, I was fair and obliged to pledge myself to the cause. But that would be improper. This is their fight, and yours but not much. You're gonna take these uh, Hellfire Claws. Sorry, I still like these. I have a problem with these. Like when you look at them up close, when you look at them from afar, they look kind of cool. But when you go up close, you see the handles like way in the back of it. So there's like this huge section here, which essentially isn't supported by your hands because it would easily rotate in your your palm. So it doesn't. I don't find this as, as being a uh, 
an effective tool. I think that handle really should be like in the jaw of the Coriol head. So it should be more like right here. So it's really more kind of like uh, just more like a protective layer. There shouldn't be much beyond your fist while doing it. I think the way this is displayed is very ineffectual for the fist. So I like to think my head cannon for the whole thing when I see these weapons is my fists are inside the mouth of that curial. Just because I think it's more effectual to and more stable to, to be able to punch with it. Sorry I'm making phone today, but the alliance here. Leaders have agreed to his proposal and the grand melee will be held here in the shadow of the gates of judgment and in sight of the capital. An announcement has been made and allied forces are currently en route. The eyes of Ishgard are upon us, Eskos. We must not fail. A rare opportunity to see you pit yourself against allied forces. Outside the cult anymore, perhaps. Perhaps I would not miss this for the world. Oh, it, it does. Like, uh, uh, my uh, row, my main, uh, it's the same thing. It looks exactly the same. Uh, I mean, more. <laughs> but no, they grasp onto those handles, which are on the back of the curial head. head. And it's... Uh, no. Just the way that was designed does not make it stable. You can easily punch forward, it would tip up, and because of the head, it would cut into your, your fist. It needs to be further in so that in addition it's supported, you've got much more things, and it's less likely to turn. Again, my own little thing. I mean, when you, when you take a look, when, when you talk about fist weapons, you're thinking of of brass knuckles, essentially. Brass knuckles are basically, they go over your 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 fingers and they're solidly set in so there's like a metal plate that uh, is the front of your fist. And so when you punch, it hits, hits that, but it's very, very stable. It's the same thing with these fist weapons. The actual part of it needs to be, it essentially needs to be a, a, a weapon type glove, not a not a not an actual like weapon weapon like daggers yeah they're gonna be out and about but because of the way that you hold them it's very stable by by the hilt same for swords axes etc you can't have your weapons flopping around when you're trying to do battle there he is I swear I say, when you didn't appear, I began to question. Nothing, never mind. Uh, um, to think that we are mere moments away from facing the cream of Eorzea's hilarity in battle. That I am a mere... Uh, but what if... Oh, what am I saying? I have to stop imagining the worst. I must think of the victory of our... Glowing. The stories I will tell on a lord. Well, when he awakes... Duty! My ready old boy, are you? Oh, by the way, we have some armor for you. By the way, how can I forget? Father Bing will present this to you. I know it's sudden, but we believe that men who, who would find it inspiring if you bore the colors of Houseful Tom into battle. Pray do us this honor. During the Grand Melee, some of your gear will be glamoured. Your attributes and abilities will be unaffected. 
basically, I'm still wearing the same gear. It just looks... By the way, aren't you quite cold in that <laughs> cold in that outfit? I'm like, I'm a monk. I need to be like, like loosey goosey. I mean, I, I don't understand what. Oh, okay, I'll wear it. We are facing Hippin and his adopted father, the Bull of Alamigo. Ramon Aldean. Let all here present heed well the rules of engagement. So, the Grand Melee is a large-scale battle in which an allied uh, company of Ulda, Gerdanian, and the Minsen forces will be pitted against the company of Ishgardian forces. When a combatant is incapacitated, the opposing company will be awarded tactical points. The first company to attain the designated tactical points of 100 is declared victor. During the Grand Melee, officiants may mark certain combatants with the Fury's gaze, which can be, in, uh, which will be indicated by an ethereal tether linked, linking them to their company's flag. While defeating most combatants will award your company one tactical point, defeating marked combatants will award your company ten tactical points. Marked combatants also possess enhanced abilities, rendering them more powerful and more difficult to defeat. Defending and Defending and defeating these combatants is the, is the key to the So basically, For the honor you kind of and the glory of Ishgard. Kind of prioritize the, the people with the talent. For the honor and glory of Ishgard. Nanamo Merrillib and Connie Seda are watching the above. Ready, Very well. Brave men and women of the Eorzean Alliance, let the Grand Melee begin!
level. this out. Turn my volume down. Cyclops! Cyclops! Everyone on your guard! My forces fall back! Continue the melee, I'll deal with him. <laughs> Daft Sog. You heard the man! Back to it! All forces, form a line on Essigos now! Met, I will not lie. I was hoping it would come to this. So then, shall we dance? Damn it all.
Did... Did he win? Then we... We... Victory is ours! Ishgard! Ishgard! <laughs> well fought! Well fought, my friend! You truly are the warrior of warriors. Thank the fury you were on our side. My lungs are burning, and I can barely stand. I didn't think I could do it, but then I did. We did. We faced the Alliance's best, and together, with one heart, with one purpose, we prevailed. You know, Cyclops has bells. After a thousand years of hardship, of strife and bloodshed, we are strong enough to rise to any challenge, be it on the battlefield or beyond. The future holds so much promise, so much joy. We need only show them the way. display, Sir Knight. While doubtless less than pleased, I am quite sure the Grand Companies are honored to have been bested by such valiant warriors. The honor was ours, Your Grace. I am pleased to see that Ishgard's proud martial tradition is being upheld. When the time comes, I, will be I back trust you Saturday. will fight alongside sure your enough. brothers and, and sisters in the Aeorzean Alliance with the, the same fervor you displayed in opposing them. Things. I note that our friend elected to take the field in Ishgardian colors. At my behest, Your Grace, if we have given offense, the blame lies with me. <laughs> Fear not, Sir Knight. It was a surprise, nothing more. And any hint of ill feeling was thoroughly dispelled by the spectacle of our mutual friend's duel with General Rauban. On the subject of surprises, I could not help but marvel at the passion and unity of purpose displayed by your countrymen, given the troubling reports we have received of late. I shall take that as a compliment, Your Grace. The events to which you allude are the price of change. The end of the Dragonsong War marks the beginning of a new era for our nation, and for the people, high and lowborn alike, who will lead her into the future. Ah, yes. The people. Change is indeed a perilous thing. For we who seek it, and they who fear it. I shall pray for Ishgard. And for you. Well, that made for a refreshing change. Congratulations on your victory, by the way.
These guardians certainly seem happy with themselves. I, for my part, am merely glad you did not strain anything in the process of single-handedly winning the battle for them. <laughs> Tis but a scratch, I assure you. And I will not suffer you to worry over me. Not when we have a dozen far more important concerns. Make that two dozen. Still, as your stolen never tires of telling me, we can but face them head on one at a time. One day at a time. As Minfilia would have done. Saul's balls. I had forgotten what it was like to feel so alive. Not since leaving the blood sands have I had the privilege. Not since the bull of Alamigo hung up the swords. Back then, the uh, back then the outcome might have been different, but I do not dis begrudge you your victory. I know how far you have come and how much you have endured. Our fight only confirmed it. We shall have you do this. We shall have to do this again one day when time allows. I shall look forward to it. Now go. Go to the Ishgardians and celebrate your victory. You have earned it. Come, Pippin. Our grace is expected us. Lead on, Father. your goodbyes. In all the years I've known Robon, I cannot recall ever seeing him look so happy in defeat. Well, everything seems to be falling into place, does it? The Ishgardians have gained their symbolic victory, and the Eorzean Alliance has been strengthened in the process. Be proud, Esikos. You made this happen. And they learn the emote victory. We have done it! Nay, you have done it. You have brought us the victory we have desperately needed. There is not left but to return to the capital. Come, let us see what reception awaits us. Cutscene. Oh 
Unruwa, my boy. Shouldn't you be in bed? <laughs> Thank you for your concern, my lord. But I have largely recovered from my ordeal, and I have naught but several scars to show for it, which I have been told some women may find appealing. I see. And to think I was worried sick over you. I'm not sure I understand, my lord. <laughs> well, let's put that theory to the proof, shall we? My, my, my lord? <laughs> Twould seem that a great many things have occurred in my absence. I thought I might begin to make amends by welcoming you in person. The messengers spared not their chocobos to bring us word of your victory in the grand melee. I cannot well describe our elation when we heard the news. It called to mind the day we rejoined the Aeorzean Alliance, and I glimpsed hope rekindled in the eyes of the people. The Fury herself ushers us into a new era. Sir Emmerich, the time is now. Aye, that it is. Reconvene the conference and summon Vidofnia to Falcon's Nest. We will make peace with Race Velga's brood and hasten this bloody war to its end. Yes, Lord Commander. I will send word to Artoirel and bid him resume preparations. Emanuele, you will place yourself at your brother's disposal. He will be glad of your assistance. Shrug. <laughs> No stopping it now, is there? We should inform you Stola and the others. My dear friend, I doubt I will ever be able to thank you enough. But when the conference is successfully concluded, I damn well mean to try. They say you dueled General Ravon, but you may bring the flames. You do not think the man is so ostentatious. But what I could have seen it. After we parted ways in Montoya's cave, I returned here to speak with Tataru. We agreed to tell the others only that our search from Minfilia had reached an impasse. I subsequently learned that you, you had left for Falcon's Nets, but I thought it best to keep to myself for a time. I am one to rely on you for much when we are together. I needed to think, to reflect. I still do, I suspect, but matters are here have seemed to be coming to a head. In short, there are some things I feel I must say, though nothing so urgent that I cannot wait until after the conference. So let us speak for Falcon's Ness and see if Lord Ultra is in need of assistance. Well met, Master Winsmore, and thank you for looking after my brother. They say he fought bravely and that he did not dishonor his house. But you, my, my lord, to you we owe everything. As you can see, we have made every effort to strike strike while the iron is hot. We made our intentions known that all would be welcome to attend, and so they came. By the grace of the fury, they came. The ceremony will not be a lengthy affair, but the... There's still much to be done. I would speak with thee more, but I must see to my duties. As for you and Master Alf now, you will do not but enjoy yourselves. Is that clear? Any dare beg your assistance again, I will have words.
Well, there you have it. We have been forbidden from meddling. Shall we wait? Uh, shall we wait, or have you other matters to attend to before the ceremony begins? Eh, I'm not doing anything. Excellent. I only hope Senker and the others will not be late. Uh, Epical events uh, do not come around very often. Epical? The appointed hour approaches. I... She begged leave to watch the proceedings. I saw no reason not to grant it. Should I choose to deviate from my prepared remarks, I ask that you trust in my judgment. Have I ever done otherwise? Our peoples met thus, children of Thordon, even by our reckoning. Vidofnir, daughter of Hresvelga, we give thanks for your visit, and bid you welcome to Falcon's Nest. Our sire bade us hearken unto the whispers of our hearts. They spoke to us of a paradise lost, of bonds of brotherhood which they yearned to see restored. Ours too yearn for such a restoration, and they have guided us here this day, that they might yearn no longer. Brothers and sisters, ye who stand as witness, hearken to me! Since the days of Eld, when the bonds betwixt man and dragon were sundered by our hand, our peoples have known only war. Bloodshed without end, losses beyond counting, and still we fought. And still we fought. Some wounds do not heal. The dead cannot be returned to us. But we the living can yet choose another course. Here and now, we can lay down this burden, this hatred, this vengeance. Our forebears fought not so that we could die, but that we might live. So let us honor their sacrifice and spare our children this death sentence. Let us gift them a new legacy. Life. Betwixt our peoples yawneth a divide deeper than the deepest abyss. Wider than the widest sea. Generations will live and die ere this divide is bridged. Knowing this, doth thy heart yet yearn for peace, son of Thordon?
Look now on the legacy we would leave to our children. A dream of peace, inscribed in stone for generations to come. Father and his beloved, as they were so long ago, happy and at peace. The dream they shared shall be ours once more. Child of Dravania, art thou grown so forgetful that thou wouldst forsake kith and kin and consort with the spawn of Thordon? That thou wouldst dare contemplate peace? Hearken unto me, all of you! The final chorus is nigh, and all will be held to account. All will bathe in the flames of retribution. Till the coming of that day, look you on your sins and despair, for none shall escape my wrath. None shall escape my revenge! Seven hells! Take that worm! While he lives, we'll never know peace. Aye! There'll be no end to this war till Nidhogg is dead and gone! So let's kill the bastard and be done with it! Death to Nidhogg! Death to Nidhogg! <laughs> Death to Nidhogg! 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 Death to Nidhogg!
Where they go, the last of the guests. Having come hither in hope in their hearts, they depart with hatred and bloodlust. <clears throat> Until the moment I saw him strike, they still held such hope that we would be able what you seen in Asaslav, an illusion perhaps, but he acted without hesitation, as did Sir Emmerich. For mercy, Vadolfnir's wounds were not, was not mortal, or so Lucia tells me. The dragon was spirited away to Annex trying to receive care from her brethren. We can but hope her recovery is swift. But such was surely Midhog's intent to deliver a proclamation not only to the children of Thorden, but to his kindred. All is coming, and ye who do not stand with us, stand apart. She is an example, a message to her brother, another instrument of his vengeance. When I said I wish to speak with you after the conference, I confess I envisioned rather, ha rather happier circumstances. If anything, however, this latest tragedy makes the needs more pressing. There are things I must say, not to the warrior of light, or even my fellow sire, but to you, Eskos, my friend. But not here, no. Ah, but of course, the intercessory at Camp Dragonhead is still open to us. Let us go there. Forgive me, that took longer than expected. You seem puzzled. Oh, these! I thought something warming might not go amiss. It was not all that long ago that we sat here, you and I, in our very own falling snows, as Lord Horshvon called it. I still struggle to believe he is gone. And Azel, too. I had such hopes for her. Master Matoya asked me what it was all for. Why we fight, and why we die. Were I still commander of the Braves, I would doubtless have replied, for the future of Eorzea. But I'm not that man. Not anymore. I needed a new answer. One that I could live with. And when I saw Estinian at the ceremony, I knew at last what it was. I do not want to be a man who sacrifices his friends and family for a cause. I want to fight for Astinian, and I want to save him. When Nidhogg leads the Horde into battle, Ser Emmerich and his forces will do what they believe must be done. That is their choice to make. Yet even if Ser Emmerich is willing to forsake Astinian, I am not. We must fight for him, for he is our friend and ally. We may struggle, we may fail, but we must try.
we'll find a way to save you. We will. I know we will. Thank you, Asagos. It is unfair of me to unburden you myself in this manner. Time after time am I glad that you permit me nonetheless. You are my true friend and ally. Though not all of our fellow scions will support our stance on Astinian, I have faith that we will win them over in due course, such as the infectious power of hope. Right, there is quite enough solemn introspection for one night. I think we should benefit from some time in the company of Tataru. She stays stays for us at Photon Manor. Let us not keep her waiting any longer. Yet again, we walk an old, too familiar path. I am reminded of when we first came to this manor. Lost and uncertain, we were granted succor in our need of hour of need. We are saved, and now is our turn to return the favor. Hear, hear! Let no one say that the scions do not repay their debts. After all, what kind of people would we be if we forsook our friends? We stopped looking for Ida and Papa Limo, or we gave up hope of bringing Minfilia back. Though she knew it would cost her dearly, when Fidia reached out to us to deliver a message, she believed that it was imperative that we understand the true nature of this star, with a rift between Zodiac and Hydaelyn, and the Asian's aspirations. But for all that has been revealed, I cannot shake the suspicion that there is much we have yet to learn. In any event, I think it's time we step back from, from the fray and can carefully consider our next course of action. It will not be easy to turn this tragedy to triumph, but we will find a way. We will. We will. Battle stance. Two of my favorite emotes. Of all the ways for it to end. Even before his transformation, I could feel the worm's hatred swirling about Estinian. The terrible, all consuming rage. Enough to fuel a thousand year quest for vengeance. It was all I could do not to run away screaming. But Ish Guardians. Nay, all Eorzeans are made of sterner stuff. They face danger and death on a daily basis and understand what it takes to win a war. Think not too deeply on Master Matoya's words. Her intent was but to steal our resolve. That, and to remind us to look beyond these passing conflicts to trials greater still, to the truth which hides at the heart of this world. So that's your aim, is it? You disapprove? Not at all. I believe it's traditional for the student to follow in the footsteps of the master. And you are so very alike.
change. That great inexorable wave was upon us, and soon all of Ishgard would bend to its will. For all our sins, for all our scars, the future for which we had long yearned was at last within our grasp. But it would be bought at a heavy price. For in those twilight hours, did Nidhogg cry out for vengeance, and his brethren raised their voices for the final chorus of the Dragonsong War. Caution, Ida. That is all I ask. Do not be so eager to place your faith in them, not until we know more. All right, this is a good uh, stopping point. Before we uh, head in for the next part, because this is actually the end of the uh, 3.2 content, Gears of Change, which sevens were Gears of Change. That was actually the title of that patch. Uh, we'll be going in, uh, starting the Revenge of the Horde uh, patch in this next round but i'm going to put the pause here so we don't have too long of video over on youtube i'll be back in about uh 10 15 minutes uh while i refresh beverage uh actually probably make myself a sandwich because my tumbling and i will be back but uh, yeah actually probably should have done this a little bit earlier but yes sir it's fine it's fine here Stay tuned.